Legal Dice. Welcome back to the stage and welcome to our first rescheduled talk, a practical introduction to Peering Manager, what it can do for you and how you can get started with it. Our two presenters are Julian and Julian. Julian is 23 years old, is a student in transportation engineering at TU Dresden. He volunteers at his local student network since 2017 and is also working as a student at DEKIX for over half a year now. Julian is from France. He is a network um, engineer working for the Restena Foundation with over eight years of experience in carrier and edge networks. He is also the lead maintainer of the open source project Peering Manager on which they are going to present. The stage is yours. Okay, so uh, hello. I'm hearing myself, which is strange, sorry. Okay, I guess I have to live with that. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for the introduction. So, I guess we can skip the introduction slide. And yeah, today I first want to tell you what is Peering Manager. Then I want to give you a demonstration on how to set up a new peer, uh, starting with uh, adding it to Peering Manager, sending the peer an invitation email, and setting up the, the sessions on the router. After that, I want to give a brief overview on what is required for the installation and what features are coming next. So, um, yes, as I said, Peering Manager is a web software for managing your peering relations. Um, it is integrated into the into Peering DB, so you can get started by adding the peers with all the information that is already in peering DB. Send them an email for peering and then configure the router with a template. Uh, peering Manager is an open source software. It is, is on, hosted on GitHub and it is a DKIC sponsored software. Yes, so let's jump directly into the demo. For the demo, I have uh, ready here the peering DB entry for the Hessian uh, broadcasting company. And uh, I want to show you how to set up uh, peering sessions with them. So first, I copy their ASN here. And then this is the main overview of peering manager. <laughs> where you can see how many objects you have and uh, what you have done last. So to add a new autonomous system, we can click on autonomous systems where we have a quick overview of uh, peering partners we already have. And when I click add here and add the ASN, uh, other information will be automatically filled out. So the name, the IRA, IRA set, and the max prefixes are all automatically imported. I can then set a contact if I want to, but the contacts that are in peering DB will also be imported. And then I can set uh, policies I want to apply on the router. So for me, these are my default uh, policies I use for peering in and peering out. And um, in this case, I also want to filter the prefixes on the router. So um, we only accept what is in the array as set. Uh, the filtering I am doing uh, with tags. So on the router configuration in the template, I can walk over the tags I have and do stuff based on the tags that are applied to an autonomous system. This is the overview you can see when you open up an ASN. You have a quick overview over the uh, AS set and max prefixes here again, what is their peering policy. And down here you can see the exchanges you have with them. And when there is an exclamation mark at the back, then you don't have sessions with them. 
So the next step I would take if I want to peer with them, I check if the contact here is imported properly. And you can see here it is already filled out in knock roll as it is written on peering DB here. So um, we can see here these are the available sessions I could have with them. And today I want to peer with them in Frankfurt. So I check the sessions here I want to add and click on add and I will get here a pre-filled form where I can uh, set the password, multi-hop and uh, also policies again. So I can set routing policies on the autonomous system level, on the internet exchange level and on the session level. So if I, uh, I will check here that every settings are like I expect them. And then I click import. So the next thing I want to do is uh, to inform them that I want to peer with them. For that, we have uh, the possibility to send an email to them. So I choose a template here, which I have set up earlier. And you can see here it generates an email. Since I only want to peer with them in Frankfurt, I will remove the other entries here. So only the Frankfurt entry remains. And yeah, just like that, I have finished the email for them and can send it from here as well. Oh, if I choose a recipient. <laughs> Okay, so they now have received an email. They know now that we want to peer with them. Next up, we have to configure our router for the peering. So for that, we have the deployment tab here. And uh, we have to write a template for our router. I already did that here. Uh, writing templates is done with the Ginger templating language. Some of you probably already know it from writing Ansible templates and the like. And you can see here I'm uh, iterating over all the connections I have, set up the policies, and then uh, further down I then set the uh, actual sessions up. So now, now I have the template. Uh, I have added the session. Next up, I have to deploy it to the router. We currently already have one router here. It's a Cisco IOS uh, device. Um, Font size größer machen. Okay. Uh, is this better now, I hope? So sorry if, uh, if you couldn't see everything. Uh, so, where was I? All oh, right. Uh, so here I have also a quick overview over my router. Uh, you can see here the information about it is imported from Netbox. So it uh, also will use Netbox to connect to the router. You can uh, also use Napalm directly. And yeah, here you then can check out the configuration of it. This will now take the template I have showed you uh, and will generate actual configuration. So you can now see here the, the interface configuration we are generating and further down there should be an entry yeah, for the route policies and even further down then there also are the neighbor configurations here. Okay, so I've verified that my configuration looks like I expected. I can now start deploying. When I have this checked, it will also compare it and will give us a diff in a few seconds. So configuring takes a moment. Uh, please also be aware if you have peering partners with a lot of prefixes, 
it may be that a peering major requires several gigabytes of RAM to generate the configuration. For example, if you have uh, Hurricane Electric as a peering partner, they have a lot of uh, prefixes. So for us, it takes like four or five gigabytes to generate the configuration. All right, so you can now see here a diff. And you can see here it set up the routing policies. Doesn't do anything funky we don't expect. And yeah, we can click commit here. And in a few moments, the configuration is on our router. You can also configure a system D timer or cron job to uh, commit the configuration periodically. So you already always can be sure to have the current prefix lists on your router. So let's wait a moment until this is finished. Yeah, and it is now saved. So we can close out of here. So this was a short demonstration of how to add a new peer. Uh, but there are also a lot more from tabs here. So you also write an email template, the same as the configuration template with Jinja. So this template was used for the email we have seen earlier. And yeah, uh, you have seen in the configuration, we also deployed uh, some uh, routing policies. We have these here, so if I scroll down to, to the private peering in, you can see here uh, there is a config context field available, so I can use this uh, free text uh, later in the configuration. And also the communities you can add to sessions can be configured here. So yes, this is the, was the demonstration. Next up, what is required for the installation? Uh, you need a recent version of Linux, a database, in this case PostgreSQL, uh, Redis, and uh, current version of Python. So if you have a system with a Linux from like 2017 or newer, you can perfectly run Peering Manager. Um, and if you want, there is also a Docker container and Ansible playbooks available. So what's coming up next? And this is the part where Geom also can tell you a bit about the IX API integration we uh, will have soon. Uh, yeah, so the Kix uh, most, uh, is sponsoring this feature, actually, the XXP integration. And the idea is to uh, basically talk to AX API from Peering Manager. So you can grab details that your internet exchange yeah, that you are peering at can actually give you uh, very specific details such as uh, network services you set up on the exchange, the MAC addresses that are being used, the IP, uh, the BGP session that you can set up with route server or black hole server, for instance. These are the most uh, interesting, interesting feature bring with AX API. Uh, it's going to, to be released in the next release, the next major one which should be around the beginning of December, end of November, beginning of, uh, beginning of December, maybe. The AX API is quite integrated for now. There is a, there is a pull request that, that, that is being mentioned here. So should be, should be coming, yeah, in the, in a few weeks. Yes, so AX API is the biggest new feature. Uh, there will also be some new API endpoints soon for inbound peering requests, a deeper integration so to get more information from peering DB. 
and uh, deeper integration into a netbox to get, for example, information about free VLAN and IP space for direct peerings. On the inbound peering uh, request, what's in for, for for network operators is that what we want to bring is to be able for you to have a an online web page where people can actually go to your web page and fill the details for you to automatically provision the peering session on your site without you doing nothing. This is the people going on your web page that will um, fill the form with their ISN, the peering session they want to set up, where, in which IXPs. And they just click OK. This will automatically send it to a peering, peering manager with ingest that data set up the BGP session for you and you just have to dispatch them on the on your on your routers using the deployment uh, menu that Julian uh, show showed earlier or using the automatically uh, uh, task that can be uh, configured. Yes so that's it. Um, do you have any questions? Yes, uh, there are questions. The first one, um, is there the possibility to apply RPKI validation inside the peering manager? It was a bit hard to see in the first few seconds of the presentation, so we aren't sure if this was visible or not. Uh, for now, it's not visible. This is not a work that has been done. It's probably going to be done in in a release at some point, I don't know when. This is not in the roadmap yet, but it was it was in our heads already. Okay. Then you said uh, source of truth for your router's BGP configuration. Would you recommend it uh, to also use it for internal BGP sessions, or is it possible, or is it only for external BGP sessions? Well, you certainly can use it, but uh, the focus is on pairing at an IX and direct sessions. Yeah, okay. the, the main focus is for the edge. The internal is a bit more tricky to handle, in my opinion, but you can use it. You can, you can try and, and let me know if it works for you. Mm -hmm. Any plans to improve handling of prefix list generation? For example, move prefix lists into files so they don't pollute the config at all. Uh, this is a tricky one as well. Uh, for now, what we do for the dispatch for dispatching configuration devices is to use a single monolithic template. Uh, we have uh, ideas about splitting templates into several parts to to make it a bit more uh, easy to manage and more uh, granular, let's say. And we also have an idea to to, to be able to generate configuration that can be sent to Git repositories for to integrate into other uh, auto, automation uh, workflow. So this can be uh, put in that in that box as well. Uh -huh. Okay, so any more questions? Currently there are none. We still have a minute or so left. But if there are no more, then I would say thank you for your presentation. Thank you for the update. And we'll hope to see you soon. Have a good day. Thank you.